We'll do better. Okay. By the way, I love the shirt. Looks good. Just saying. Um, so let's start off in the front. We've got dual propane tanks. That was an option that we picked out. You can see that this is starting to come off. These are just plastic strips and uh, they're like shrink wrap. I say we just cut them off and keep them off. When you get the, you pick this up from the factory, these are gonna be filled for you automatically. And this right here is a switch and it's got a little arrow on the switch and it's pointing over here to the right. It's got a little window under it. If this propane tank was off and this one was on and then you used up all the propane, to, this little uh, window will turn red. And what you would need to do is come out here and close this tank, open this tank and then flip it over. Or if you want to just keep both tanks open, if this one runs out of propane, it will automatically switch over to the one that has propane in it. And behind us, we've got the deep cell battery. It's the battery upgrade that gives us about 30 or 40 minutes of extra run time on the battery. You can see the LED light bar above it. You control that with a switch inside the camper and I'll show you that. Moving on around, you've got the uh, grab handle right there. We added that and uh, we also added the step. Now the way to do the step is pretty easy. You can just reach down there with your toe and lift it up and pull it out. So you try doing that. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so easy. Oh, now we're gonna do it. There you go. There we go. So a little step, because okay. we know you got short legs and you gotta be able to get in here. <laughs> Another thing we added was this uh, outside shower. It's got a little lock on it that we have to open so there's your shower wand Aww. and then uh, it's got a little place to I guess store that when you're not using it kind of like you would inside the okay. shower and then you've got your hot and cold so we will put together a re review for that yeah after see if we've it's used it. I'll let you uh, you're gonna use two oh. hands only got one so I'm gonna okay. let you figure that out okay That's how user friendly it is I don't like it Okay, we'll come up with some ideas for that. Mm -hmm. And over here you have uh, a uh, 120 volt outlet. So if you're running, you know, if you're hooked up to 120 volt or you got your generator running, you can plug things into here as well. Uh, on the sides, they've got these little LED markers. The rear ones are red and the front ones uh, up here are orange. And it's got this, which holds the door open. It, it basically locks into this when you open the door. Oh, that is unlocked. It is unlocked. Okay, are we ready? But speaking of locks, let me show you how the locks work just so you'll know. So you've got two locks. You're going to have a regular latch lock and a deadbolt lock. So in order to do the deadbolt, you do it like this. Um, you take your, your big key, stick it in, and you want to go to the 9 o'clock position and then back to the 12 and take it out. And now you've got your deadbolt locked. The top one works a little bit differently. It requires that you put this in and then you turn it and then you just take it out. So it goes to three o'clock and out. But the only way to remove the key is in the 12 o'clock position in this one. And then to unlock it is the opposite. You go back to the three o'clock position and then you go back to the 12. And on this one, you go back to the 12 o'clock position and pull it out and then it ought to open up. Hey, that's a lot of rules. Up top, we did the upgraded um, air conditioner, which means that it's got a heat strip in it and it has the soft start. So we can plug it in with the, like an uh, power cord to 120 and when it starts up it won't cause such a draw of electricity that it pops the breaker uh, moving around the back they've got the little cutouts in the bumper that look like little trees or mountains you see them <laughs> <laughs> and then this is where we would fill our fresh water tank if we wanted to have water stored then that's where we would do it um, they said don't travel with water in it because the little straps aren't made to keep hold the weight. Yeah, to hold the weight and it's going to rattle around. You've got your two inch hitch receiver on the back and that can support up to a tongue weight of 200 pounds, but do not use it to tow another vehicle. This is not set up for towing ever. We added the second set of tail lights in case we did have something back here like um, our cargo rack or bicycles. We didn't want to block our tail lights. So now you have these higher ones up as well. And up top, you can see what the outside of the uh, magic fan, uh, they call it max fan, looks like. And I'll show you how that works from the inside. It's really cool. And your full-size spare tire on the back. I was thinking about tinting the windows. What do you think? I think that'd be a good idea. Yeah. 
So around here, this is your power cord outlet. So you've got about, I think it's about 20 feet. We'll measure it of power uh, cord that's kind of looped in there. You can pull it out and plug into a 30 amp connection. Um, this is your uh, on-demand water heater. So you move that to the right and then it, or the left and it opens up. And so this comes on on demand. So whenever you need hot water, it will fire up and make hot water and then it'll turn off when you're not using it. It doesn't have a tank. So that means we don't, we're not constantly heating up water that we don't, aren't, aren't gonna be using, you know, just keeping a supply of hot water at the ready. Um, down here, this is where you hook up your sewer connection and your sewer uh, hose is inside here. It comes with this, uh, hose right there so that hooks to here and then the other end of it goes into your sewer dump and then if you want to dump your sewer tank then um, let's see you're going to go to this one and that's gonna be your black water so you're gonna open that first and it'll let all the dirty water come out and then if you want to open up uh, and, and drain your your gray water it's this one and a good rule of thumb is to always do this one first and then after you're done do that one so it flushes all the really dirty stuff with the not so dirty stuff the gray water and cleans out that tube so when you clean it out or you put the tube back up then it's it's kind of clean if you have access to a fresh water connection like a hose bib at a campsite then you can just plug it in right here and the water will go right in you don't have to fill up your tank and then this is the furnace exhaust and also the intake for fresh air. So you never want to put anything in front of that because it gets really hot. Good job. Um, over here is a little vent and that's the toilet vent uh, for, for the black water tank and the toilet. And up top, we've got our own vent for the bathroom for smells and stuff that you can open and then you can push a button and it creates a fan to suck air out. And uh, on this side, we can see that you've got the trailer brake controller. So that's hooked up to your car so that if this were to come off, it would uh, pull a pin out of here and it would turn the brakes on on the trailer and uh, slow down the trailer instead of just letting it ride all over the, all over the highway behind us. And that's about it for the outside. You ready to see the inside? All right, let's go. Now I'm going to go inside and I'm going to start videoing your face. I want you to give me honest reviews of what you think when you first see a scamp and we'll go from there. Okay, come in. Who is it? Okay, first off, this, this is kind of hard here. Yeah, it's in the right position. It's just, it is, it's pretty stiff. Okay, well we are a little sideways. Yeah, because we're parked on the curb. We don't have our stabilizers down. Hey, I am going to say first off, the factory pictures are very good without wide angle lens. Because <laughs> this is tiny, tiny. And the fur is is something. That is actually a marine grade uh, fur. It's actually what they put as yep. carpet on like, like a pontoon boat's deck. Something that's be it. So you can get it wet, but yeah, they call it mouse fur. Yes. Well, I like the color. I think the color is good. So first off, my, my rule number one is having a bathroom. Okay. The most important thing. I think, I think I'll fit in here just fine. I'm gonna turn on the lights, okay? Oops, I gotta turn on this uh, battery connection. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I see what see what you're saying about that little tub. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's got a little place for your feet. That's kind of cool. I think uh, this will be, you know, a, I think this is great for two people. I think this is, you know, a, a perfect size bathroom for a 13 foot. I, I want to show you something though that they didn't think about or I don't see that they thought about is that watch what happens when you shut the door as far as how much light you have. Oh yeah. There's no light in the Man. bathroom. They so we need to come up with a way. Oh, I, I apologize. Look what's right there. Dream pump. And above it. 
A tiny little light. A little light. So we do have a light in there. Perfect. Okay, we'll shut it and let's see. Okay. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, great. So the little switch below it, that's your drain pump. And that way, when you get water here on the floor, you turn that on and it sucks it out and puts it in the gray water tank. And this, is, this isn't as big and cumbersome as I thought it would be. I thought it was gonna be kind of big. I, I think that having like a little hook would be. Yeah, we can put like a, one of those command strip things maybe back here and just have yeah. a place to hook it and tuck it out of the way. I think that's, a, that's an idea. And then my our idea for keeping the toilet kind of dry after when someone's using a shower is we're going to take a, a plastic garbage bag and just drape it over the toilet and use it as kind of like a, uh, a shower cap for the toilet. And then when you step out, we'll, we'll pull out the uh, shower cap and shake it free and maybe we'll hang it up here on the same hook that we use to hold that back. I don't know. Yeah. When we find that product, then we will be sure to uh, do a review on that. Yeah. Okay, so the fan here, the way this works is when you're ready to open the fan, you want to push this up. And you see how it went up yeah. and it gave you... So now it's venting to the outside and then you push that red button. And it starts a fan to help pull out all the, uh, you Moisture. know, steam and, or, or smells and, and you're good to go. And then when you're, you know... Putting it down is the opposite. You push that and then you just pull it down. It takes a little bit of a pull to kind of pull it down. It doesn't seem to come down at both sides equally. You kind of get one side and the other. You're getting it. There you go. And then it's down. The mouse fur can get wet. So that was one of the first things I asked. Yeah, it can get wet and it's designed to get wet and dry back out without having any bacterial growth or anything like that. So, uh, but I think if we're careful, we can keep it from getting wet. It should just get moisture and condensation from up there. And then you can turn the uh, shower on and off with this so that you can have the water temperature set the way you want it and then just stop the water from coming out to conserve your water for boondocking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then um, what do you think about the shower, uh, Kurt? Do you think we should upgrade that? Uh, this is going to be something that we'll have to, if we decide to do this, this is just a cheapy, you know, little so I, I would suggest that if we go this route that we have like four sitting in the trailer and we'll replace it like, you know, once every quarter yeah, or, or more. How would you feel about getting a clear one and that way we can just leave the door open? Yeah, I'm fine. All right. I like that too. Yeah, I'm good. All right. So moving over here, we're going to have uh, the propane stove. Let me go out and turn on the propane tank so things will work in here. Right back. Okay. They left a little bit of a mess. I saw, yeah. you know, their, their delivery cleanup maybe is lacking a little bit because you've got little pieces of, uh, I guess, insulation from wires and some stuff back here, but not, not horribly bad, but could just use a good vacuuming or sweep. Yeah. I don't even know if we need a whole broom. I think we can get away with one of those little dust pans and a hand, you know, that you just kind of, what do you think? Okay. Well, we'll look at that or maybe even try one of those Swiffers, but I think that it's going to be something little. Yeah. Honestly, I think just a, a thing of wipes. I do too. Okay. So here's how the stove works. So, uh, for one thing, you never want to operate the stove with the lid down. <laughs> for obvious reasons. Yeah. It's not, not like a heat plate. I think that was, I mean, this is kind of, well, it's not glass, but. I like this a lot better than those metal ones that you've got to find just the right angle and catch it on a hinge or it folds and falls back. My other trailer had that, remember? It was yeah. just a pain. This this holds That's itself funny. up. And when it's down, it makes a nice flat surface, whereas the other one, the, the, the burners stick up and you've got to buy this box that kind of goes over it to make it so that the, it hides it. So turning this on, here's how it works. You want to turn this over to the start position and you want to hold it in while you hold this button down and uh like that and then it lights your your flame and then you can uh, turn it to low you can see that's just a really low flame i don't know if you can see the flame in there but yeah you can't or uh oh you know it went out and then so i guess that's low and then that's high and they both yeah. work that way, but real easy to turn on and off. And when you're not using it, you just shut that. You can see this pink stuff is part of the winterizing because this thing has been uh, winterized. 
and I haven't unwinterized it yet or summarize we call it unwinterize or summarize I don't know oh, yeah. you got a little sink with a little stopper and uh, this covers it up I think you could use this as a cutting board as well so mm -hmm. it's pretty good I'm just checking to see if that okay and then uh, up here, you got your cabinets for storage. Uh, they don't really stay up very well by themselves. Uh, they they, they, they want to fall back down. So um, we need to probably come up with maybe a little hook system or something. Was that coming out? Yeah. A little. Oh, yeah. This, this needs to come in. So well, I'll figure out something to, to kind of hold that up so that when you go up, it stays up. Or maybe I'll put a little hinge that pops down. I don't know. Yeah, a little hinge might be okay. It, it depends on how well this plastic works. But um, it's fiberglass at the bottom, and the top is mouse fur. And um, yeah. it's got a little end panel that kind of covers up some wires back there, I guess, that are part of the wiring system. This is our kitchen window, and it's got lights up underneath it. It can be turned on and off. If you leave the lights in the on position, then just with one switch, you can turn everything on or off. And I like that. Um, to open the windows, here's how we do it. So you push in the unlock. So up is unlocked, uh, the top one. You push that in and then you can slide that across and you can also slide your screen all the way across if you wanna have complete openness, but otherwise the screen stays there and then you've got a, like a privacy window. I don't think we could get that one tinted because it's got that texture on it. These are little nuts that actually cover rivets. So this thing's riveted together and to cover the rivet, they put these little nuts and you can get replacements of those nuts uh, from the parts department. Storage going all the way around. Yeah, it's the U-shaped storage that goes over the Yeah, so it's dining. not it's not separated. This is all one piece. Yep, it goes all the way around. I do think that there's would be some but we'll, we'll look and see if we can find a product that will hold that hold those I don't know up if that'll matter but i think we can find it are these metal these uh handles um yeah are they plastic no uh i think that they're probably like a kitchen cabinet type of well, if they're not metal, maybe we could put a magnet up there so that when you go up, it just holds it up. You know, I can figure out a way to fix a magnet. And that way, when it goes up, it holds it up. Because it's not a lot of weight. It's just a convenience thing. This one kind of holds itself up through just the friction of the hinge. But yeah. the other ones don't. Yeah, this one doesn't really. Yeah. Okay, uh, blinds. So these are... They don't have any cords on them. All you do is you just grasp the little knob and you pull up and then it kind of accordion uh, collapses and then you open up the windows the same way. You open it and yeah. pull it across and then you push it all the way across and push it in at the bottom to make it lock. These need to be down when we're in travel. That's what they said. Another thing is you never want to travel with the bed up because it puts too much... Uh, force i'm sorry with the table up you know because it puts too much force on those hinges as you're bouncing down the road so you always want to travel with it in the stowed position like it is now check this out um, come around here and just crawl on the bed so over here you've got some more outlets and then you've got um your usbs so you, we can just plug in our phones and stuff like that right there and then you've got the old like uh cigarettes or cigarette lighter kind of style that you can use as well. I don't know when we would use this very often because we don't have too many appliances that work off that, but I was thinking that our little Jackery plugs yeah, the in. Yeah, Jackery does. Yeah, we could plug it in there. So staying with this little galley section, this is another uh, drawer and it's got a metal bottom, I noticed, and uh, I like it. This um, will be perfect for a couple of, of Utensils. Yep. And then you also have this other drawer, which could also be a utensil drawer. This is your furnace, and the way it works is pretty easy. You come over here, and you see that switch on the side right there that says on and off? Yeah. Or heat. Go ahead and rotate it to heat. And then increase the temperature to the temperature you want. There you go. So what are you going to put it at? I'd crank it up to like 80. Okay, 
See, as we got to 80, you heard a little click over here. It's going to turn on. Yeah, it says heat on. Yep. So the first thing it's going to do is turn on a fan, and that's going to help get away, get rid of any fumes that might be in there from uh, liquid propane gas so that, you know, it doesn't spark up a big explosion. So if it doesn't come on right away, that doesn't mean it's not working. But then you'll hear a little click, 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 and it'll light. And the way you know it's lit is you can look down in here, and back in there you can see a little blue flame. Yeah. Can you see it? It's in there. You can see it? Yeah. Okay. That means you're, you're on. And that's your pilot light. It will stay on at night. Um, and the heat will come on and off. So you can set the temperature the way you want it. And this will come on and off as needed to maintain that temperature in here. That takes care of the heat side. But we also have an electric heat option. That's because we added the heat strip to this. So you can see that this uh, control also has red and blue. So that's where you would set the temperature. And if you want to go to heat uh, operation, you just turn it to where it says optional heat. And then you set the temperature. These open and close vents all the way around. You can change where the vents are. Whoop, that one popped right out. I'll have to put that one back in. But these are made to come down and open up to allow air to come out of all these directions, including oh. straight down. Okay. So we can kind of decide where we want the air to come out. Um, refrigerator. I haven't done the, all the reading on this one, so I don't know what this one is, but at the top of it, it says vent. So I think it has something to do with allowing it to defrost or something. I don't know. I'll double check. But on the inside, this is what your refrigerator looks like. It has a little freezer compartment up here, not huge, and a little uh, um, slide out section and a drawer. And that's about it. This can be adjusted to um, left or right to keep maybe like a bottle pushed to one side or the other. You've got a little section up here that's covered. The control panel for it is actually over here. They recommend that you, if we're going to go on a trip, we need to pre-cool this about three hours before our trip. So to turn it on, I've learned that you just press the power button in for a few seconds. And then it lights up. Come over this side, you can kind of see it. And it's got all the controls in there. Oh, it's so pretty. Yeah, it's looking, it's really neat. It's very it. fancy. Where is it? I can't find it on my phone. Oh, there it is. And uh, so you can set the temperature and all that. Right now it's running off 12 volt. And then when we um, hook up to a campsite, it'll go to uh, switch over to 120 automatically. And it's looking like these are just little stoppers. Yeah, this is shipping container stuff. So these just peel off. So that was just put in by the manufacturer to keep it from moving around during transport. So we, we'll, before our first trip, we'll be responsible for taking all these off and uh, getting rid of them, taking off this tape and stuff like yeah. that. Just like when you get a new refrigerator at the house, it comes with all this packing material. <laughs> all right, um, little storage underneath here. And I noticed there's an extra power outlet. This is the power outlet where the refrigerator's plugged in. And then you can see your red and blue for your hot and cold water and your other wires that do various things. A lot of wires are going this way because up underneath here is going to be our breaker panel. So why don't you hold the camera and I'll show you how to put up the table. Okay. So it's pretty simple. The first thing you want to do is take these middle cushions and they're going to become your backrest. And the part that bends goes into the curve of the stand. All right, just like so. And then this part just moves out of the way in the, I'm just going to put it out over here for now, but we can also tuck it up underneath. Are you happy we went with a brown? I am. I like it. And then this basically swings up and then you want to pivot it up so that those tabs fit right in here at the top. See those little tabs? They're going to walk into here. So you click it in and you're good. And then underneath here, there's a button right here on the right side. See where my thumb is? You push that button in and then you can rotate this whole thing down and that becomes your little table. I yeah. thought that the table went all the way across. Nah. Apparently it does not. It just goes to here. And well, I, so what is this in? 
it it is just a thing. It doesn't. Oh, so do it's anything. just a spacer for the bed. All it does is support the rest of the mattress, and I think that's because we went with the optionally a little bit larger yeah. width mattress, and that covers it that that part. So, so that's our table, and this is kind of how we would be when we're camping. We've got room to sit and talk, and blah blah blah. Yeah, we've got this little piece here. Uh huh. But now that that's up, we can look at this. So I'll show you this one. So this has, looks like it's got two halves. It's only this part that moves and, and comes apart. This one doesn't come off. So these are your breakers and these are your fuses. And you can see the amps are somewhere between, you know, you got a 10, a 15 and a 20 amp. So I think we ought to go by the um, yeah. auto parts store and get us some extra fuses and just keep them in, in the camper with us. Uh, folks at home, if you want to, they sell a little package of these at the camp, uh, the scamp parts department where you can just uh, grab a selection as you need it. And then right here, it shows what each one of those fuses controls and which and what the breakers control. So whatever is directly across from it, it shows what it is, how many amps it is, and it's pretty much right across from uh, the fuse itself or the breaker itself. Yeah, and it might be a good idea to uh, just attach the uh, spares just in here or you know just to just attach it to uh, that fur if it's if there's fur in here yeah that might be a good idea I'll show you what those little hooks are that that uh, I read about okay and, and uh, yeah they'll they'll be good so a little while ago we were talking about that over here it had a, uh, a thing Charging. this is the same thing it's the it's got the USB it's got the 120 volt outlet and it's got the um, little charging area for, you know, like a cigarette lighter tile style. Cigarette lighter Might style. Might be able to go with a, a dust buster. Just a little baby vacuum that, it depends. We'll see yeah. when we get all packed up. This is a carbon monoxide and propane gas alarm. So if it detects carbon monoxide or propane, then it will uh, go off and let you know. So um, you can test that, and um, that's what it sounds like when it goes off. If you hear that, you want to hop out of the trailer and get to some place that has good ventilation and figure out where your leak is. Now I'm going to put this back down, or back, yeah, back down. Well, so what about you, looking in here? I am, but I'm going to put oh. these on top of it, so just give it a place to go. Okay. So to put this up, it's the opposite. You push the button in, and you rotate it up. And then you want to disengage the latches at the top and let it swing down. And then this goes back in its place. And then your, mat, your, your uh, cushions go back in place. But we're just going to put this over here for now so we can open up these access hatches. I really like these access hatches because they allow you to get into things that were so hard to reach in our other camper. Our hot water heater was, it was almost impossible to reach the back side of a hot water heater in our old camper because it seemed like the camper was just built around it. But here you can easily access, uh, you know, your inlets and your outlets and your wiring to uh, do what you need to do on this if it malfunctions. And here is where, remember that electrical cord that we saw on the outside? Yeah. This is where it goes out and this is where it kind of piles up inside. And there's another 120 volt outlet available down there right here. Yep next to the one that your water heater plugs in that you could plug stuff into if you needed to, I guess. And then this is made out of the same plastic material that this cover is. It's like a cutting board material. So it's a spare. It's kind of a spare, yeah. So over on this side, you have basically the same thing except it covers up something else. Over here is gonna be your fresh oh, yeah. water tank. So this is what holds our fresh water when we fill it up if we want to go boondocking. The only thing that really keeps it from sliding around are these little metal straps. And that's why they say don't be going too far with this thing full because that's a lot of weight sloshing around. And these straps aren't designed to hold it too well. Down here is your water pump. So you can um, turn on your pump uh, to make water pump from this out to your toilet, your shower, and your sink in your uh, outside shower. And then all the PEX lines are color coded, blue for cold, red for hot, and um, they're easy to get to. And you know, I've got a PEX kit, so I can I can fix this if we need to. Um, 
I think that's pretty interesting. I'm gonna hold this for a second and show people that this water pump has a filter section on it right here that you can uh, remove and it helps filter uh, things before it goes into your pump. It can, you know, tear up your impeller. So, over on this wall, we've got a few more things and this is your water heater. So if we wanted to turn on our water heater, you would push this. Why don't you come around here so you can see it? I'll let you hold the camera while I point to it. So water heater, turn it on right here. And um, you can increase or decrease the temperature of your water heater. And uh, this allows you to, I think, go back through some of the options. And then over here, you've got your like little rinky dink fire extinguisher i really would recommend that we replace this with something that is it's bigger is a little bit bigger yeah like this one this will just make the fire angry i think i think we could probably just add another one in yeah. under the seat storage uh up here you got some more storage and down here you got more storage some of the things they gave us was this which plugs into the end of your uh your power cord so that you can uh, convert it from the 30 amp connection that you'd get oh. at like a pedestal at a campsite to a regular 120 volt like you'd have on the side of a house or an extension oh. cord. Yeah. And then this is the control, the remote control for the Max Air. And the way this works is like this. You push this to turn it on. And when you do that, it's going to raise the hood, the vent, and it turns on the fan. So when I last used it, it was bringing air in. So it's just a real gentle way to bring in fresh air. Yeah. If you press this button, it stops the fan and then it turns it in the opposite direction. So now it will suck air out. And last night um, I turned on the furnace, I guess for the first time and smoke came out of it, I guess, as it burned off um, like a, uh, I guess anti-corrosion packing material and stuff like that. I don't know, whatever was on there, it just seemed to dissipate. But we had a little bit of a fog of smoke in here. So I turned that on and I opened up that kitchen window and it ventilated the whole thing. If you don't want to look for this in the middle of the night, the controls are also right up here. So on, off, open, close, all there. And then if all else fails, you have the manual controls where you can at least manually open and shut and close that um, that hood which is kind of nice i'm thinking about this has like a little holster and uh, this drops down in there i think it'd be nice to mount it up here so it's with all our other stuff like all our controls are in one spot yeah and uh so if you look through here the other side of this is just about a quarter inch piece of uh, fiberglass so what we'll need to use is either rivets or we can take a wood backer plate and put it up against here and then screw the holster into it and it'll kind of just sandwich the plastic in between the wood backer plate and this piece of plastic and hold it on there. I think I'm going to use the rivets though. So or, or, or we could use a command strip. It's like think? zero pounds. Oh, you mean just for this part? No, you can just command it. it well, it's just got that kind of concave area. So it's not like a flat, smooth surface for that command strip to hook to. So I was thinking we could probably just do this piece on a command strip and it would just hook on there. Maybe we could even do a Velcro. I could put Velcro yeah. on the back of this and Velcro on there and we just stick it right there. I think the Velcro would work there too. Okay, yeah, we'll give it a I, shot. Worst case scenario, we pull off the Velcro and this works. So over here also, we've got some things. Look, this right here shows you how many volts is in your battery. And then this one turns on your fresh water pump, that thing that's down here that pumps water to the sink and the, it's, and the shower. This is what you would turn on to pump that water. When you're not using it, you want to turn it off. So we would basically have to turn that on and off whenever we want to use our water pump. Um, am I missing stuff? Well, there are the closets. That's oh, yeah. main, one of the main problems that everyone has Let's had. Let's start with that little thing you have your hand on. What that does, is when you turn that it disconnects everything electrical from the battery so you don't have like one thing that you forgot about running down your battery you turn that off and it turns everything off so go ahead and turn it 
the other way. There you go. See how everything just shut off? Everything's off. Yep, that does it. And if you turn it back on, it turns everything back on. Okay. So, so close that, and then you can open up that bottom cabinet and see what surprises are in there. Okay. So we've got the wheel that we bought, so we can put that on the tongue of the trailer instead of the pad, um, and that helps, uh, you know, you move the trailer around. This goes on the jack stands. Um, it has like a, uh, a a socket end, and it fits on the end of the jack, and you can rotate mm -hmm. that. And it puts the jacks down. Move those out of the way and open up that panel down there. So down here we have our brake controller and what is that other thing? What does it say on there? Can you read that? No. Let me, let me get in there and look at it. So one is the brake controller, I can tell that. And this, hmm, a lot of power is going into it. Um, I think that that might just be some type of a, a a wiring harness that allows maybe a distribution panel or something I'll have to look into that um, one thing they were telling me is that with a 2023 and above they went ahead and pre-wired it for everything and left the wiring in place so you're not chasing wires through the walls and the ceiling if you want to put in like a TV or a antenna or something on the roof yeah. that you know they left the wires there did you notice that there was a towel bar up there a, a hanging rack Oh, yes, I see that now. What do you think about, do you think we'd have room to maybe move this one a little further back and put in a second one and have two rows? Um, we'll, we, we, will, we will update that theory. Okay. We'll, we'll see. Now, supporting the bottom shelf are just these blocks, which looks like it's pieces of this that they've cut and they drove a screw in. I think those are probably need an extra screw. I don't know. Maybe we'll have to see. It depends on how much weight we put up there, but just remember the only thing holding up the floor of this shelf are these little blocks. It's in there. I only have one screw in them and this one back here. So it's not super, um, I think strong, but I noticed that over here, you've got your hot and cold water connections that go into your shower. So if you ever have a leak or you need to replace that faucet, uh, our valve, man, it's easy to get to. Yeah. I love that. So, uh, up here, another little storage area. There's the electrical connection for the light that's in there. Easy to get to as well. I think ideally we'll probably fold our clothes and just have them folded. Maybe we can get some of those little uh, shelves that kind of allow us to have a divider so we can have like two rows or maybe some of those little drawers I guess we can look for stuff yeah. and try it it's just kind of a curved area so it's hard to yeah to I, I think that we're we'll try a couple of different routes and let y'all know what um what's the most successful from uh, my point of view yeah I think so that's a good idea um little trivia over here we do need an area that's going to be able to hang up a dress. Yeah. This this is your QR code for your owner's manual. So if you ever want to oh, look up something, you just scan that. And then this is your uh, light that's on the outside. And this is the one that was on the front. And these are, the, of course, the ones for the inside. All right there. So side note, we can probably just make a QR code for our channel. Yeah, that's a good idea. We'll make a QR code for, on the outside of our camper. So we also have a screen door. When you first look at this, it looks kind of complicated. Um, you've got this whole thing, you've got this whole thing. It's not like the screen door on grandma's house where you had one latch. But one thing I really like that they did is they put in all these hinge supports. Mm -hmm. So one problem I've always had with trailers is the, the doors get wonky because you've got one hinge up here drilled into aluminum and one down there and eventually they just get loose and fail but to open up your screen door to detach it from the main door you want to pull this to the left baby right here 
like you'd squeeze it with your fingers. Yeah. And then it opens. Yeah, and we then. We have a snag. Oh no, we already have a snag in our screen. I wonder what caused that. Right there. Let's see. Do you see? I do. I wonder if I can. There's probably that. Feel that. That's what it is. This rivet is really sharp. And. Uh, I have sandpaper at home. Yeah, we got to grind that down. No sense in fixing it right now and having to do it again, but um, I can replace the screen on this pretty easy because it's just got the little channels that come out. So I'll do that. In fact, I might use a different screen. They have a screen called No See em, which allows you to see out, but no one to see in. And we could replace it with that and, and give that as an option. We could do it at the bottom too. That's a great idea. But when this is uh, locked like that, then yeah, you shut that, keep the skeeters out, and um, the door itself gets held open with this little retainer. This one's actually made out of metal. I've seen a lot of trailers. It's made out of plastic, which will break under a lot of force and also gets brittle after UV rays bake it. One thing I just noticed on this is the latch seems to be like a... Not quite square. I feel like it needs to be more straight up and down. That one seems to be kind of tilted this way. Uh, but yeah, we need to uh, file that down because it's sharp to the touch. Yep. And yeah, tinted glass on these I think would be great. Yeah, I think tinted glass there would be good. Um, I don't think that we'll really notice, but everybody else will. Yeah. You're so little that you make the trailer look like a regular size trailer. No, it still looks little. <laughs> it's still small. I love it. You remember how to do it? So you're going to pinch it. This side and this side together. There you go. And then the same thing to make it attached to the door. There you go. A little pinch. Squeeze it together and let it go. Yeah, it just pulls down. Be careful on that sharp piece. And then, uh, these are the stabilizer jacks that we I was telling you about. They just come down. One thing that's important to remember if you're ever putting these down is you want to put them down until they touch the ground and then you want to do about another eighth of a turn. They're not designed to like lift the wheels off the, off there. So just okay. kind of touch it and then push down a little bit because otherwise you could bend those stabilizer jacks. And um, the owner manual has, the owner's manual has a lot of good information about like leveling your trailer and stuff like that that I'm going to go over later in the videos. But so far, what are your, as far as pros and cons, what's your overall take? You, you love it, leave it? I think this is going to be a fun, uh, a, a fun add-on to our already fun life. That's right, baby. We're going to have gonna a good be time. We're going to have some great time. We sure are. I think. And if there is something, I'll find it. Should we look at maybe getting our own personalized? Yeah, like that. I already, I already said it's good. So when you pick this up, it comes with this temporary registration, and it's kind of made out of a laminated material. But uh, the sales office gives you the other half of this, which is like a little strip, so that if this does come off in your travels home, you still can show law enforcement that little uh, piece of paper that you carry with you inside the car to keep it uh, keep you all legal. Um, but you'll notice that it's VIN specific, so it will show, you know, you can't just use it on anything. Um, oh, and look, right here it tells you about the, uh, the jack. So if you ever forget how many, you know, to turn it at an eighth of a turn or whatever, it has the instructions. All right. I hope the um, decals and the, the vinyl stickers and stuff last for a while. Um, coming around here, I want to show you something 
that it's kind of hard to see because of where the tanks are but if you ever want to know like what the tire pressure is on the trailer and stuff right down here it has all that information it's also in the owner's manual and then it has your VIN number and date of manufacture and everything on that other little data plate. Um, also, the VIN number, sometimes on these, they just over time, you can't read it anymore because it gets all weatherized. But they stamp it right into the frame right there. So you're not going to lose that. I like that a lot. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. I think we went over it pretty good. You got any questions? No, we're, we're good. All right. We're going to start a new chapter of our fat, happy life. That's right. Say bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.